customer perspective, it's never been busier. And just from a personal perspective, it's funny because, you know, about a, over a year ago, I would I would explain what I do to people, and their eyes would kind of. I, I coach <laughs> soccer and basketball for my kids, and I would, you know, one of the dads would say, "Yeah, I work at Ford. What do you do?" And I would try to explain what I do, and I try to do it succinctly, but I could see the person's eyes slowly glazing over as I explained. But now they, you know, you, you see PCR on the ticker on the bottom of ESPN, you, you hear yeah, the news yeah. every day. And when you tell someone, yeah, we have software to make PCR tests like for COVID, they get it. And mm -hmm. um, so that that's interesting that, you know, unfortunately we've had COVID change our, our world and our landscape, but we have been working on this problem of design, PCR design. For two mm -hmm. decades so we are uniquely positioned to to help companies that are trying to design pcrs and particularly those that are doing multiplex pcr we almost have built like you know the google uh, if you will of, of search engines for matching dna or mismatches mm -hmm. to dna mm -hmm. so if you think about the power of that well you can find right away if something is it, it hits or doesn't and the quality of the hit so the ability to score that well early on is important but once you have these more robust and rigorous metrics for scoring, now you can bring the computational power to the problem. You know, in biology, we learned like A pairs with T and C with G. And when I first arrived at DNA software, that was the context of base pairing that I understood. But mm. the reality is mismatches are not created equal and some are stable and some are unstable. And our ability to scan for those mismatches and then report ones that are stable or, or not is really what sets us apart. PCR design is multivariable, it's multifactorial. There's lots of nuance that goes into it. And this might be oversimplifying, but if you're working with a tool that's really not built for the job, like for example, this is maybe something we can all relate to, but if you've ever bought in furniture from Ikea, you put it together with that, you know, free Allen wrench they give you, <laughs> that can be infuriating. I mean, it's not free, you paid for the Allen wrench with the furniture, but you're using something that can get the job done Maybe, but you're doing it in a way that's suboptimal. Part of what we're doing is bringing awareness to the community that mm -hmm. we have best in class multiplex tools. We were awarded that last year by Frost and Sullivan. Not only do we have these solutions, we partner with organizations to perform a function that isn't always something that they enjoy or really want to invest in. Sometimes this is just a part of the process. We've got a lot of expertise. We've been doing this 20 years. Uh, we've thought about multiplex quite a bit so that that organization doesn't have to. I think the future is multiplexing. I think the trend of the economic benefits, the, uh, the time, getting, you know, for example, we've done several respiratory panels that have 30 targets, and you're gonna simultaneously report all 30 in a matter of hours, sometimes maybe less, depending on the platform. And can you maintain sensitivity, specificity, and coverage while there's 30 targets present? Mm -hmm. Because that's quite a trick. Mm -hmm. So. We've spent a considerable amount of time working with customers to be able to pull that rabbit out of the hat, and we've been mm -hmm. able to do it. Mm -hmm.